This is a gallop nut, and it's delicious. Like an almond, it can be processed into oil, flour, milk. You can roast it and put a bit of salt on it, have it like a snack nut, or you can just eat it raw. There's eight million hectares of these nut trees growing at a ratio of around about two trees per hectare throughout Melanesia. Melanesia includes Papua New Guinea, Bougainville, um, Vanuatu, Solomon Islands, um, New Caledonia, and parts of Fiji. This is a naturally occurring rainforest, so doesn't require any external irrigation whatsoever. And being indigenous, it's impervious to disease and pests, so no herbicides or pesticides required. I'm one of a team of four who are exploring the potential of the sustainable commercialization of these nuts. I'd like to, at this stage, show you a video of some of our time in Papua New Guinea last year as part of our feasibility study. This is the mature kali plant being harvested from the mother tree. Yeah, I'm trying to plant around all these areas with uh, nut trees, kali nut trees. Does the gallop nut require any irrigation or it's all just natural? No, this is natural. It's been grown, just a lot of it is growing wild. Mm. Um, but this is, um, it's native to the Bougainvilleans and Papua New Guineans as well. Gallop nut is a uh, good nut. We can bake them. We can make all kinds of recipe out from this uh, gallop nut. It's got a lot more oil, it's, it's more oil content than coconut. Mm. Gallip nut should really be the source of income for women and children, um, just like cocoa is to women and children here in Bougainville. So let's go back to where this all started. About five years ago, I went for a medical checkup. The results came back, and although pretty fit and healthy in most respects, my cholesterol levels were off the chart. So rather than going on an immediate daily dose for a lifetime of statin drugs, as suggested by the doctor I spoke to, I sought a second opinion. So I went to a homeopath um, and nutritionist who suggested I try, as a first pass, eliminating sugar and grain from my diet for six weeks. I get the blood test done again and see if there'd been any change. So those results came back showing that my cholesterol levels had dropped considerably. Not only that, my energy levels were up, um, I'd lost weight, and the niggly, hips I was, uh, niggly pain I was getting in my hips at night completely disappeared. So clearly this was a great way for me to eat. Not necessarily for everyone, but certainly for me. So I could handle, if I must, giving up pasta and rice. But the thought of foregoing my almost religious breakfast ritual of poached eggs on toast, followed by pudding toast, which is honey on toast, for those of you who really don't know. Um, <laughs> well, that was just inconceivable. So with my baker's hat on, I went about developing myself a grain-free bread. Well, after many, many failed attempts that ended up on the beach for the seagulls to enjoy, I came up with the perfect loaf. The texture and flavour profiles were spot on, and it didn't fall apart in the toaster. Breakfast conundrum solved, end of story. Or so I thought. A friend came and tried the bread, and she loved it. And she grandly announced that I had invented paleo bread. Well, at the time, I really had no idea what she was talking about because that was early days in the paleo diet world of New Zealand. 
But I took her advice, and I duly took a loaf of my bread to our leading organic grocery chain, Common Sense Organics. And they loved it, as did a host of uh, consumers in a similar dietary boat as myself. My little bread empire was born. For three years, I, I distributed my bread throughout New Zealand. The problem was, the main component of the bread was almond meal. And the price of almonds was skyrocketing due to the uh, damage of the trees due to the uh, ongoing droughts in California where the almonds are grown. Now, this was really squeezing my already pretty lean profit margins, and it became really obvious I had to find an alternative to almonds and fast. So I tried processing all, all different seeds and nuts, and nothing worked, and it was so frustrating, although the seagulls remained appreciative. It was around about this time that my son, Gabriel Davidson, co-founder of the Wellington Chocolate Factory, was in Bougainville buying cocoa beans. While he was there, he was really enjoying snacking on these lovely gallop nuts that were just growing abundantly throughout the island. And when he got home, we were chatting about this, and we thought, well, what if they could swap out the almond for gallop in my bread? I wonder if that would work. So we subsequently organised for a sample to be sent over, <coughs> which I then processed into a kind of flour, and incorporated into a loaf of bread. Well, the result was fantastic. It was better than my original. And not only that, but these nuts were the most delicious nuts I'd ever tasted. That was our light bulb moment. What if we could sustainably harvest these nuts, not just for my bread, but for a wider, more global market. This kicked off endless days, weeks, months, years actually, of discussion and research. Our team of two grew to include James Bushell and Tim Gibson, seasoned professionals in the sustainable and ethical business arena. Feeling cautiously optimistic and with an awareness that doing business in Papua New Guinea was going to come with some pretty hefty hurdles, we decided it was time to conduct a feasibility study on the ground. It was time to take this kernel, pun intended, of an idea to fruition, or at least give it a good go. I'd like to invite you all at this stage to open the little package, those of you without nut allergies, and um, please try the nut. I find this nut to taste somewhere between a macadamia, a pine nut, and an almond. Actually, this is awesome. We're having a moment here, you know. Until now, there's only been a handful of people outside of Melanesia that have ever tasted these exotic nuts. I think we just made history. <laughs> <laughs> so we headed off to Papua New Guinea. We visited smallholder farmers, government officials. We went to a research facility that um, had been studying the potential of these nuts for some years. We met with the head of a collective, Women and Youth in Agriculture. We talked to cocoa traders, and we travelled by banana boat miles out to these really remote islands to properly understand how the villagers there felt 
about our project. Well, we were so warmly welcomed wherever we went, with 100% support for our initiative across the board. So armed with 40 kg of gallop nuts, we headed home. We agreed that the trip had been a resounding success with actually fewer hurdles than we first imagined, but also aware that there were going to be many as yet unknown challenges into the future. But on balance, we decided it made sense to progress. The team identified several opportunities to create a sustainable industry in Papua New Guinea to improve its economic situation, to provide meaningful, ethical employment, particularly to the often marginalised women and youth of the regions, to protect that precious rainforest from the foreign logging companies that continue to clear fell it at a rate of about 1% a year and to provide for the fast-growing demographic of conscious consumers worldwide a delicious organic nut in all its forms. It's clear there is a very willing market out there. Every retailer and distributor that we've talked to about these nuts is really excited and definitely on board. We've spoken with the head of a huge global cosmetics company who's pretty keen on the oil and pending his independent lab testing has requested exclusivity. I'd like to show you another short video of our time in Papua New Guinea and Bougainville. It provides an opportunity to create a new sustainable industry to improve PNG's economy and positively contribute to the biodiversity and social sustainability, particularly livelihoods and gender outcomes within PNG for the foreseeable future. We will promote market-led agriculture by strengthening value chains and also delivering capacity building and training to communities to achieve more efficient agricultural processes and value-add products so farmers can have increased incomes. So, bearing in mind that almonds, gallop nuts, element for element of quite a lot of similarities, and to give more of a sense of the kind of range and scope of this project, let's have a quick look at the almond industry. The Californian almond industry that produces 80% of the world's almonds has been under fire for several years due to the massive volume of water required to irrigate its crops. It takes a staggering 3.5 litres of water to grow one almond nut to maturity. Now, most almond trees will produce, on average, a thousand nuts per harvest. So that's three and a half thousand litres of water per tree per harvest. I'd just like to remind you again at this point that the, um, the gallop nuts, they require no external irrigation. They're a rainforest. They bring their own rain. The almond farmers are adopting ever more ecologically devastating practices to irrigate their thirsty crops. They're drilling wells to 350 metres deep into the earth and more, and sucking the water out of the aquifers, the last bastion of water in those drought-stricken regions. Between 2012 and 2015, the San Joaquin Valley farmers dug 5,000 of these wells. That's more than were dug cumulatively over the previous 12 years. So much water is being pulled out of the earth that the land there is literally sinking. This is causing millions of dollars of infrastructural damage to pipelines, bridges and roads. 
And the farmers are also taking from the rivers. To the extent that the river levels are dropping, which is causing the water temperatures to rise, which in turn is negatively affecting the salmon in those rivers. The salmon are dying of gill rot, and the native salmon numbers are dropping alarmingly. The development of a gallop nut industry has the potential to offer the world an alternative to almonds. We believe this is absolutely crucial because the way the almond industry is operating presently, it's simply not going to be viable for much longer. Here's our plan. We aim to develop an off-grid, solar-assisted processing plant based in East New Britain province of Papua New Guinea with the capacity to supply the New Zealand market with the nut in its various forms. This will also test the viability and logistics of our project. If successful, we'll go on to develop a much larger um, commercial-grade factory with the capacity to supply a more global market. This is a massive project, and we're in it for the long haul. What motivates us is that we know the world is ready for this delicious, organic, sustainable nut in all its forms. Learning from and working alongside the indigenous people of Papua New Guinea to develop this gallop nut industry means we can protect that precious rainforest. We can improve the livelihoods of the people who live within it. And ultimately, we can lift the struggling economies of our neighbours, the Melanesians. Thank you. <laughs>